Hey everybody, Hank's back. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the th things I learned building the Cisco NXOS Netbox Sync Utility. This video specifically is going to be about what it took to run the Docker image for this utility directly on the NXOS switch. Let's take a look. So I'm going to starting out by connected an SSH into my NXOS switch um, where I'm going to be running this application. Now, the first thing we need to do is Docker runs inside of the bash environment directly on the switch. Now, this is different from the guest shell environment. This is the actual underlying Linux bash environment that the NXOS applications and routing protocols and everything else is running on. Now, by default, you don't have that, that feature is not enabled. So we'll go ahead and we will enable it. So feature bash shell turns on the ability to connect into that bash environment. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a run bash sudo su dash. Now what I'm doing here is this is connecting me in and I'm saying uh, run the sudo su operation to elevate my privileges so that I'm running as the root user in this case. By default bash, you'd get a user account, but in order to turn on and manipulate daemons like the Docker daemon, we need to have root access. So we'll just connect right in as root. Now the ability to run Docker is baked into NXOS and has been for a few versions now but it's not started by default. You start it just like you would any um, starting Docker on other Linux operating systems, it runs as a service. Now, before I start it the first time, I wanna check the configuration of uh, a little bit of the configuration bits around Docker. And so I'm gonna take a look at the Etsy sysconfig Docker file. And the key element that I'm looking at here is the size of the Docker storage that's gonna be carved out. Now, in this case, I'm running this on a Nexus 9000V. It's, a, it's kind of a virtual version of the switch. It doesn't have as much um, storage and boot flash space as you might have on a physical switch. And so by default, it starts out using this small Docker storage of just simply 300 megabytes for the Docker bits. Now, having run my application, I know that that 300 megabytes is just not enough for my app to run. So I need to increase the size of that. And so um, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that by using VI to edit the file. And I'll just come down here and increase the Docker storage from 300 to 900. And so now when I start up Docker the first time, it will carve out a storage backend of 900 megabytes. And that's enough for my application to run. If you're, app, if you're running on a physical switch, that large Docker storage of two gig is gonna be more than enough. But as a VM, I do need to increase it a little bit as it goes through. Now, if you start Docker before resizing it, you have to resize the Docker storage or the Docker storage backend. There's instructions for that inside of the, um, the Docker on Nexus 9000 programmability guide to go through. Now that we've gone ahead and um, got our storage set up, I'm just gonna do a service, service Docker start. And it's going to go ahead and start this up. And you can see right here where it shows carving Docker boot flash storage 900 megabytes. That's the, uh, the effect of that file we just updated. All right, it's gone ahead. It's now finished starting the, uh, the Docker service. We can check that with a service Docker status. And we can see that Docker, uh, Docker D is indeed running as it goes through. Now, before we, uh, we go ahead and move forward, a, a couple of the prerequisites that we're, like, we're going to need for this application is our application, again, is going to be connecting to our NetBox system. It's going to be connecting to WebEx Teams cloud to send messages. And so I need access from the, the Docker container out to the internet. And you get internet access um, through the, um, you will we'll take that internet access through the management port. However, DNS is something that we don't always remember to configure on our switches. And so let's make sure that that is set up correctly. So inside of Linux, I can look at the Etsy resolve.conf directory and see that I do have my name servers configured. Now these are labeled with bleed because these actually get pulled in from the NXOS configuration that's out there, specifically off the management VRF. So if I exit out of bash and just do a show run um, VRF management, we'll see that my name servers are also configured to those open DNS servers. So my DNS is set up correctly. And then let me go back in. So if we've seen that and I'll do a run bash sudo uh, su dash, get me back here. And then we can do a final check by actually seeing, can I access the internet? So I'll see if I can curl out to Google. Now, 
we're running again, not in guest shell. We're running inside of the actual bash environment from NXOS. And now the, the VRFs that come from the NXOS configuration actually get passed down into the underlying Linux, which means I have to run the curl command inside of the management VRF. VRFs are referred to as net namespaces or net and NS here inside of, uh, of um, Linux. And so this IP, what the command says is in the IP net namespace management, I'm going to exec, so run a command, and then it's just the normal curl command. So I'm gonna do a curl dash V for verbose. I don't actually care what the, the data is. I just wanna see if it works. And so dash O dev null will send the, the data that comes back to just a null kind of a trash can. And then we're gonna to try to look up google.com and reach it. So if I run this, we can see, where is it? We've got uh, right here. So my, my headers came back from the response. I got a 302 moved temporarily. A 302 header is just a redirect. Um, this worked, right? I was able to reach Google. Google said, hey, I'm not at google.com. You actually need to go to some other place. In this case, it looks like OpenDNS actually stepped in and, and gave some information back. But I can see that the internet is functioning correctly. So internet's up, Docker's running. Now the next thing I want to do is pull down the actual Docker container for my application. Now you would do that on a normal workstation or a, a normal system using Docker pull. And we'll do the same thing here in Linux, but like we had to with curl, we need to run that Docker pull command inside of the management namespace. So IP, again, IP net namespace exec management. So run inside of the management VRF, Docker pull, and then there's my container name. So we'll go ahead and pull that down. All right, the pull is completed, so we can see that we've pulled down the image, and now it's uh, local on my uh, on the um, uh, it's local here on my Nexus switch. If I do a Docker images, we can see that indeed I have my H Preston NXOS Netbox Sync tagged latest, and it's here stored locally on my uh, on the Nexus switch. Now the next step would be to run this application. Now the way the application works again is it's gonna to connect to Netbox and uh, pull down the configuration from this switch. It's gonna to connect to Teams and send notification chat ops messages. And so my application needs to know where is Netbox, what token to use for authentication, um, what are the WebEx Teams token and information. And like many applications, um, this is gonna leverage by pulling those out of environment variables. And so I need to set up some environment variables here in Bash that know that, that information. Now, the way we do that is no different than any other Linux environment. And so I've got this, uh, these are the commands or the types of commands that are gonna run. So export netbox URL is how I set what the actual netbox URL that I'm gonna connect to is. And so it's there. We can see my netbox token for API access. Now the Docker application is also gonna connect back to the switch and um, make, um, make configuration bits that are in there. Now what we'll see here is it's connecting to the switch management IP address that's here. We can see the credentials and the password as they go in. And then we can see the team's token, team's room ID as they go through. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set these uh, environment variables on my switch as it goes in. So back on the switch, I'm just gonna paste in that context there. And so I've now set all of these environment variables as they go through. So if I do an ENV to look at the environment variables, and just take a look, we can see they pop in. So here's the switch information at the bottom. You can see the netbox information here in the middle as it pop through. So those are all available and ready to be used. Now that we have the environment variable set in, in Linux, we can go ahead and run our Docker um, container based on the image we pulled down. And we'll do that using the docker run command. So here we have it, docker run. And now the, the way that I'm running this is dash dash rm says after this container is done running, go ahead and just delete it so we don't leave a, a kind of a, a stale container out there. Dash it says give me an interactive terminal so I'll be able to watch what's happening inside of the container as it runs. Then we have a series of all the environment variables needed for this application. And so we're setting the environment variables inside of the Docker in, or the running Docker container based on the environment variables from Linux. And so these are just kind of passing them all through as they go in. And then finally, what is the container we want to run? HPreston NXOS Netbox Sync colon latest. We'll go ahead and run this and see what we get. So it starts out here, we can see that we've entered in. Now I built this Docker image based on the PyETS um, Docker image. So I put my application inside of this, the starting one that had PyETS already going through. And then we can see it's running my NXOS application. 
and the name of the code is check device. And then oop, I'm going to scroll back up because it's running. We can kind of talk through what we've got. So the first thing the application does is it retrieves the current status of the device using PyATS. It looks up the intended state from the device from NetBox. It runs tests to make sure the VLANs are configured appropriately. And this is the first time this is run on this switch. So we can see there's lots of things that are wrong. We can see that we've got a few of the VLANs that are there, but starting with VLAN 106, these are all missing. And there's a whole series of VLANs missing. We can see interfaces are enabled. Some of them are correct, but other ones are not. We got lots of descriptions that aren't set the way they're supposed to be done. So we can see all of the mistakes or the things that are not accurate on the switch as they go in. I scroll to the bottom here of all of the initial output. We can see interfaces weren't configured correct. And then here's where it gets into and it's creating and fixing all of the mistakes. So it's creating the VLANs, it's setting the interface descriptions and so on. And then down here, right here, we can see where it ran its second test. So every 10 seconds, this application is set to go verify, am I accurate? And so the second time it runs, we see far more green check marks. In fact, it should be all green check marks because now it's put it in synchronization. I'll scroll through and make sure we actually are all green check marks. And indeed, it looks like we are. So we are fully up to speed and accurate with our configuration. And this is running on my NXOS switch. Now, just a reminder, we set up the uh, the WebEx Teams bits. Let's see if that is correctly pushing those chat ops messages out to WebEx Teams. And here we can see the messages have come through. I'll scroll back up to where the, it started. So right here, this 9.36 AM one is the chat from uh, the run we just did. We can see the device checks in. So the first thing it does when that application starts is just connects and say, hey, I'm here. And now we can see output, all of the VLANs that were not configured, the interfaces that weren't set up correctly. And then we can see that the switch reported back that he's updating his VLAN configuration and he's updating his interface descriptions and he's updating the switch port configurations, the three parts of the config that are being verified. Now we've got the chat apps up. Let's say I needed to go ahead and uh, add something to the configuration, maybe a new VLAN or an interface description. We want to update one of those. So let's go ahead and do that inside of NetBox. Over here, I'm looking at my NetBox configuration and I'll go into DC Access 1 and I will scroll down and we'll find one of these interfaces and we'll just update the, uh, the description as it goes through. Maybe, um, let's say interface Ethernet 1.3. We'll edit this interface and I'll say, okay, instead of the link to virt1, I'm gonna say, um, we'll say video update link to virt1. So I'm changing the description here and I'm gonna go ahead and say update that now, if we flip over and we'll watch here in WebEx Teams, we should see this variation pop up the next chance that um, the application runs to um, do the synchronization sync. Oh, and there it is right there. The following interfaces from NetBox have uh, incorrect descriptions configured, Ethernet 1.3. I'm updating my interface descriptions. And there you have it. Now we've seen running the Cisco NXOS NetBox synchronization tool directly on the switch as a Docker container and, what it, um, and how that works as it goes through. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys soon.